Welcome back to Summer Camp presented by Ford. I'm Meredith Barakovic alongside my good friend, Susan Waldman, the radio broadcaster for the Yankees. She has been covering the Yankees since 1987. Wow. The 10-year anniversary of George Steinbrenner's passing. Susan, I know he meant an awful lot to you. Just how influential was he on your career? Well, everything. And when I got to the Yankees and started covering or running around with a microphone, you learned really quickly that unless you had Mr. Steinbrenner, you had absolutely nothing. And George used to go into, they used to say things like, the eagle has landed or Steinbrenner, and everybody would run into outside the old clubhouse. And George would go out the back door and run to the elevator. And I used to follow him, Mr. Steinbrenner, Mr. Steinbrenner. And if you weren't allowed to get into the elevator with George, but I used to run up the ramps right by the elevator, and if I beat him up the ramps when he got off the elevator before he went into the office, he would talk to me. And I did this for a long time. I sometimes think he waited for me, but it was really cool. And we became, I won't say friends, but really he was really instrumental because uh, the next winter he always had um, beat writers Christmas luncheons and that year they were going to um, 21 and I wanted to go and I wasn't invited because I was a girl and it's only for guys and you're not a real reporter because you have a microphone you don't have a pencil and so um, they went and I didn't go and I wrote Mr. Steinbrenner a letter what I did was get the sales department of WFAN to find out how many people listen to my 505 spot and how much advertising they sold for that spot and I wrote it all down, and it turned out that um, more people listened to Susan Waldman's Yankee Report at 5.05 than read every paper in the tri-state area. And it sold for a lot of money in those days. So I wrote it down. This is why I am important, and this is why you should see me. And I said, I'm coming down to Tampa, and I demand an interview and send it off. And um, I went down to Tampa. I didn't tell him I was going to a spa, but I was going down to Tampa. And um, the little blinker on the phone was, was blinking when I got to the hotel. And his secretary said, um, Susan, Mr. Steinbrenner will see you at 9 o'clock in the morning. And by the way, I have Xeroxed every a letter of, of this, and I've given it to every woman in the building. So I said, OK, I'll be there. So I go there, it's nine o'clock in the morning at American Ship, which was in Tampa at, the, at that point. And I walk in and he said, Waldman? And I said, what? And he said, I don't like women cops. I don't like women in the army. I don't like women sportscasters. I don't like women firefighters. I want women to spend my money and look pretty. And I said, I can do that. And then I said, now about the pitching staff, which you think is really good and is really awful. And he started a laugh. And that's where that that started. Um, it was not easy. George was really tough on me. I mean, I, you never knew when you were going to be cut off. You never knew what you were going to say on the radio that was going to make him angry. Um, but over the years, he started trusting me and I really got a lot from him. And a year after that, he had said to me, Waldman always called me Waldman, never Susan till the end, always Waldman. Waldman, one of these days I'm going to make a statement about women in sports. You're it, and I hope you can take it. This was before the death threats and George getting me a police detail cover in 1989. But um, he was as influential as anybody in my life, except for my mother and my grandfather. And he taught me a lot. He was really hard on me. But what I learned to do was to, I learned toughness from George. You know, somebody like whenever you have a problem and I always say, don't don't fight with me. I learned from the best. And that was George. I have to ask you about that picture behind you. This is um, when George was reinstated in baseball after the suspension. Um, <laughs> WFAN let me and my producer Steve Cohen fly down to Tampa and we had like a welcome back George night. We started at nine o'clock and it was like in opening presents. We had Rigetti on and Mattingly and every, Reggie was on, Gidry was on, everybody was on. And then at midnight, magically, <laughs> George appeared. The clock struck 12 and there was George on the other side of the update. And I've still got that tape and we play it every now and then. But that was from that night. Um, March 1st, midnight, when George came back from being reinstated, from when he was reinstated. You also 
really got him and Yogi Berra back together. A big radio moment, one that you thought would either help better your career or <laughs> your career. Well, well, that was, you know, that was something that it was almost an accident. Um, it, Yogi was going to open his museum and our, our program director, Mark Chernoff, had said, you know, you're going to host um, Yogi and the 73 Mets and he's opening the museum. And wouldn't it be cool if you could get George and Yogi to make up on the radio? And I said, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, I can. Everybody had tried. Arthur Richmond, Stick Michael, everyone I knew had tried to get them together and join. Well, so a few days later, George and I were talking and he said, uh, I said, George, I want to ask you something about Yogi. And he said, why, what's wrong? And as soon as he said, what's wrong? I said, okay, go for it. And we started talking about it. And don't forget, I had never, I had never met Yogi Berra. I mean, I was not there. And uh, my allegiance was to George. And, and I, I worked this out with Dale Berra, the two of us on a phone on how this would happen. And a lot of times I thought it wasn't going to happen. We weren't allowed to tell anybody just in case it did not happen. And George timed it from the airport there. He actually flew to New Jersey in, in January and came in. And um, I was hiding behind a post, I remember. And, um, and uh, Dale Berra had said to me, what are you doing? And I said, well, either this is going to be great or my career is going to be over in two seconds. Meanwhile, I had um, I had gotten, I had set up things. Ted Williams was going to call in and Junker Ragiola and um, Bill White and all of Yogi's friends and I said, oh, please let this work or I'm going to be here for three hours with the 73 Mets and I, you know, what am I going to do with that? So um, it did work and I remember after an hour, George got a little tired and uh, he went back to the hotel and I called him afterwards and I said, uh, what do you think, George? And he said, what a great night for the New York Yankees that he stopped and that George tone came out and he said, yeah, and it wasn't too effing bad for you, Waldman, was it? So <laughs> that, was, uh, that was George. You always had to get a little zinger in there at the end. Now, I know he's had an incredible influence on you. I have to say, you've had an incredible influence on me. You've been covering oh. the game since 1987. Oh, there we are. My ninth season with <laughs> you. You took me under your wing, showed me the ropes, not only in terms of baseball, but also exploring some cities. Susan, we have had some good times over the years. Well, what we have, and the good thing about Meredith is that Meredith, <laughs> there we are in the, the hot dog. Yeah, uh, the good thing about Meredith is like, I'm up at six o'clock in the morning. So, and there's a whole day when you go on the road and most people don't want to go out. Most people, there we are, we're in uh, San Francisco. Uh, we went everywhere, but you know, you got up early like I did. And I think we went to Niagara Falls. We went to the falls in, in Washington. Yeah, we, we we with different um, different mascots. That you know, my mascot was sweet on you, Susan. Remember yeah, that, that he came in. Yes, all that that and the one in um, Seattle was a good one too. We like that. And there we are in Washington on those little uh, scooter things where we. I see. I try a lot of things because of Meredith, or else I, you know, I I've been there, done that. There we are in Niagara Falls. I think that might have been my favorite, except for the wineries that weren't really good, but the yeah. but the falls were good. Um, and also, we had a great trip to Maine as well for your birthday, which was quite lovely. We did. We went to a gunquit, which um, we went to, uh, there we are in Christmas time. Um, a gunquit, Maine is where I was in theater. I did a show up there like 40 years ago, and I went in the theater, and I showed Meredith where the theater was. It looked exactly the same. Nothing has changed in a gunquit. And, yeah, that was great. We had a, we've had some good times. See, it's all because you get up early, because most people don't get up early and won't do those things. What we didn't do was the paddle boats in Baltimore, and I haven't taken you on the swan boats in Boston yet, but eventually we'll get back there. They are on the list, hopefully 2021. There we are in London, where we went to go have high tea at the Spire. Yep. And that was a really cool experience because not only were you there, Claire Smith was there as well. And talk about some powerful women in baseball who have been through a lot, are pioneers, and really I wouldn't be here without the two of you and the ground that you've paved for me. Uh, so thank, thank you. Claire Smith, Hall of Fame. Um, 
newspaper writer is one of the best of all time. And, um, you know, if you think I had trouble, you know, Claire Smith had the same kinds of stories. Um, and so it, it was very tough back then. But we made it through it, Meredith. And we got to be at the top of the spire with a high tea and our little hats, whatever they call them, those little fascinators. The only thing I didn't get to do was meet the queen because I thought she'd like me. And I wanted to meet the queen because I think we'd get along, actually. Well, if I could make it happen for you, I'd certainly make it happen for you. But unfortunately, I don't think I have that kind of pull. <laughs> well, you might. I mean, if we can get to her, I think she would have liked coming out with us. I think so, too. She would have had a great time. Now I want to go make a list of things to do in 2021, because we're not going to get to do it in 2020. So maybe that's what I'll do when this interview is over. OK, I think that's a good idea. Susan, thank you, as always, for the time. Thank you so much. See you soon.